I do believe that AMD is severely undervalued right now and I think there's a huge op opportunity in this company because in this year we can see that these are my estimations for the different segment and the revenue they're gonna have by Q4 this year and I'll show you in during the video how I arrive at a conclusion that the net income will go from around 1 billion that is right now you know per quarter so right now there is a roughly net income of 1 billion per quarter and I believe that it's gonna go at least to 2 billion or very close to 2 billion but most likely two and a half billion US dollar so that represents you know anywhere from 80% to 150% increase in net income from Q1 this year to Q4 this year and that's going to obviously show up in the stock price because you know the company sits right now around that um, 258 billion US dollar and I think the forward PE ratio for AMD right now is 46 which is quite a bit you know especially compared also to a lot of other companies but AMD is unique in the same way like Nvidia also I think Nvidia's forward PE is also roughly thereabouts but I think like it's very easy for AMD to double their you know earnings and cut the PE ratio forward PE ratio in half essentially already this year by Q4 and this is a story that we've seen with AMD over the years throughout the past uh, seven six years uh, and this this kind of keeps happening over and over again you know the market thinks that the company is overvalued you get a sharp downtrend in the stock price which we have seen now you know when the stock price was above 200 I think it was at 227 or something dollars uh, not far ago you know it's uh, you can see here that in in march they were at 211 on a daily but i think on if you look at the hourly they were around 227 us dollar and now we are at 160 percent so there's a good like 35 percent cut in the price but i tell you that you know i think that when the numbers come in by end of q4 the stock price won't be here in my opinion and i'll show you also how i think that's gonna develop even further by q4 next year but yeah, so net income of, uh, you know, two, 2 billion to 2.5 billion represents, you know, a company that has a run rate of 10 billion because you have four quarters per year. So you take four times this, that's roughly 10 billion US dollar in net income. And the company right now then, you know, with a market cap at two, 260 billion is essentially with a forward PE ratio of this year, I think it's, it's selling at 26, 26 times uh, PE ratio. And how do I arrive at that bell? If you have watched my previous video, you can see that um, on the light blue is AMD and the 2023 AI GPU sales. And for that year, roughly they sell, sell I think, half a billion US dollar in AI GPU revenue. And I think the market is quite agreeing that the average, average selling price is 15,000 US dollar, which compares to around half of Nvidia's average selling price. So there's the average selling price of 15,000. And I think like, Right now, in uh, you know, in uh, let's say December or Q Q4 last year, they were uh, uh, selling around thirty thousand of these MI three hundred chips, which are very good compared to Nvidia's H one hundred. In fact, you can see here that uh, one of the companies here, TensorWave, is a new startup for AI. They say that AMD's MI three hundred X outperforms Nvidia's H one hundred for a uh, large language model inferencing. Actually, if you go to their web page, you can see that you know. You, if you want to reserve MI300X uh, nodes, uh, you have to do it essentially now because there's a limited ability. So uh, there's a huge, huge demand for this MI300. And we can also see that um, the other good thing about this is that they compare this and we look at their comp conclusion when they compare to H2, uh, H100 soon. But you can see that also the these eight MI300Xs that they, you know, was in their test lab and they show the result that is better than the NVIDIA equivalent H100. You can see that they use two epic CPU processors with 96 cores, I think, each. So two of these as well, you know, these are also really good. You know, these are the, the part of the AI market that people forget. You know, everyone thinks of the GPU, but they forget, like, you know, for example, in this case, they tested uh, this, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, GPUs and they needed to have two of these CPUs. And these are, like, not cheap either. Like, if you look at this, this is the top of the line essentially like somewhere here the 96 core epic 96 84 we would assume that they used in that case and that's selling on the market around you know anywhere from let's say seven to nine thousand depends on where you buy it so these are not cheap either and they needed two of these for eight of those uh, mi 300 x's and that's i think something that most people miss that you know when you talk about the uh, gpu sales i think amd's other sales in uh, in the data center will the traditional cpu side will also benefit a lot from this 
And just lastly on the CPU discussions, I think that it's important to consider that the CFO of the company a couple of days ago mentioned that although the number of you know CPU sales is probably not going to increase a whole lot, you have to remember that these keep increasing in cores. So five years ago, you wouldn't find like, you know, 128 cores. You would find like maybe 20, 28 cores. So, uh, and hence, uh, you know, the performance is going up a whole lot. So the, the average selling price, according to AMD C CFO, is also keep going up in the coming years for this. So I think the margins will definitely improve for AMD and Intel. Uh, who are selling these CPUs. So that was just a side note about, you know, how the MI300 and in the future MI325X is going to drive the other segments of AMD. But if you now, you know, look at this. So my projection for this year is that, you know, Q1, 650 million. And I think that's uh, fairly accurate because on the earnings call, Lisa Su said that combined sales of MI300X for Q4 last year and Q1 this year is around 1 billion US dollar. And I think, you know, 500 then, maybe 450, but yeah, it's 50 million here and there. 650 I go with uh, for Q1. I'll increase that to 800 million for Q2 right now. That would be around 50,000 units of MI300. And then I think there's going to be a bigger jump in Q3 because they themselves have mentioned that, you know, they're going to increase their sales uh, in second half of the year. And I do believe there is huge demand out there. And I think... Uh, the market screams for alternative to NVIDIA because, you know, they keep selling them at these insane prices and have these insane margins. You already see Taiwan Semiconductor threatening NVIDIA with price uh, increases. So I think there's a kind of reasons for other companies to want a second player in here to not give everything uh, to Jensen Huang and NVIDIA. But yes, yeah, so I believe that 1.5 billion for Q3 may be a bit optimistic. I think this could possibly a tad optimistic, but I, I went with this number. And then maybe Q4 uh, for 2.4 billion, which sums up just below five and a half billion US dollar. Now the company in itself says that they're gonna sell at a minimum four billion. So I think you know with the traditional uh, Lisa Su being Lisa Su, she's a bit conservative maybe sometimes, and you know rather you know under under promise and over deliver. That's her mentality. So I think you know it's not. I don't think it's super unrealistic. Maybe okay, let's say five 4.8 billion. But yeah, I went with this number. That would be around 356,000, let's, oh, let's say 350,000 MI300s for this year. And I then added, you know, the added revenue that these quarters bring in for data center. And this is how I arrived at my number here. The data center, for example, for Q4. Uh, so if we go look at the Q1 data center was 2.4 billion roughly. I added another two, 300 million on top of that because of the increase that we see from, you know, Q1 to Q2 in uh, revenue from 650 million in my projections to 800. And then I added around 7, 800 million again for Q3. So we go back here, you see Q3, it's now another 7, 800 million more than Q2 in data center. And then lastly, I added another 1 billion in addition because I think Q4 is going to be the biggest one. So that's 4.3 billion. So that's how I arrive at the 4.3 billion. Then I think the client uh, APU and CPUs for laptops are going to be huge for AMD in the second half of this year. And this number looks quite big, 2.2 billion US dollar for Q4. But then you see that, you know, it's much larger than Q1 at 1.4 roughly. But if you scroll back all the way back to 2022, you'll see that, you know, those numbers for uh, the laptop CPUs and APUs were around 2.2 billion already. So the numbers that I assumed for AMD, despite them now having a much, much more stronger lineup for the CPUs and GPUs for the mobile laptop market, which I think will lead to them making even more market share and also selling them at higher price because now they have a technical uh, edge with the Strix point uh, 12 core uh, Zen 5 CPUs for the laptops. But uh, I was a bit con conservative here because I think I'm a bit maybe optimistic there. So I was a bit too conservative here. Then I think the gaming console side, uh, you know, PlayStation 5 and Xbox, I think that's going to be slow now because now we are in the fourth year of the uh, current generation uh, Xbox, 5, uh, Xbox and uh, PlayStation 5. So I do not expect a whole lot of sales there. And then embedded, you know, th they mentioned that you can see that my assumptions for Q4 is that, you know, we're gonna slowly increase a bit, but not a whole lot because embedded is quite slow this year, I think in 2024. 
uh, and we could see the weakness by last year's uh, Q4 as well. You can see there, but you can see that the the embedded sales are not really up in the levels that we had uh, in let's say 2022. You know, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 billion. But yeah, so that's how it is. But I think we're gonna have some slight rebound if I understood the market and Lisa Su correctly. So this is uh, how I arrived at this 8.4 billion US dollar in revenue. And I think, you know, the operating margins for embedded will stay roughly the same. Uh, it's always been around, you know, fairly high, you know, 41%, 44%. So yeah, I, I'll, I think that's gonna stay around there. The GPU sales, you know, the revenue is 850 million in my assumption, which is around roughly the same that they had, you know, in Q1. And then, yeah, so I think that there was 16% operating margin. I went with 15. The client APUs, I think that's gonna be a big increase both in operating margin which was you know if you look here six percent but i think uh, yeah i think that uh, also the revenue will go up quite substantially around one billion but then the big one is the big one is obviously the data center with the epic with the new generations and five based epic general purpose cpus for the servers but most importantly with the mi 300 and mi 300 325x which will challenge Nvidia's Blackwell quite confidently. I think like, you know, they have some edge AMD as TensorWave said, you know, there's some parts that AMD, especially in the inferencing, maybe not as much in the training, but they are really competitive in inferencing. Uh, training part, I think AMD will be more competitive next year with their follow-up to the, you know, follow-up, which is I think named 350X, yeah. The MI350X, with I think, which I will come in the second half of next year. But yeah, for now, I think inferencing is where AMD is good at. So this leads me to, you know, the even a bit quickly extrapolating for next year. I think next year, you know, they're going to go for it. I think next year they're going to start maybe a bit slower than the Q4 of this year. But I think once they hit, you know, Q3 and Q4 of 2025, I think AMD has a path to 12 billion revenue in, uh, you know, in just G data center GPUs. And if just I quickly show you roughly my numbers, I think they're gonna have almost 7 billion US dollar in data centers by Q4 next year. Okay, some people might say this is way too optimistic, but even if you go back to, I don't know, like, you know, let's say 5 billion, five and a half, it's still huge for AMD. And that comes with insane operating margins. And I think that, you know, I think the operating margin of the data center will be close to their embedded. Once they come around 400, uh, sorry, 4 billion US dollar in sales, three and a half, four billion. So that's why I arrived, you know, at the operating income at around 3 billion and the net income once you take away the taxes and stuff to two, two and a half billion. Now, if I'm way too optimistic for two and a half billion here, let's say two billion for Q4 this year. But I think Q4 next year with even higher revenue base, I think I wouldn't be surprised if AMD then has let's say three and a half billion to four billion of net income. Um, there's also a potential that the embedded market will rebound quite substantially by second half of next year. So this could even be higher here. Um, so yeah, and uh, you could also con uh, conclude that, you know, the gaming side, the GPU for the PlayStation 5, there's gonna be a PlayStation 5 Pro. So this could also increase, you know, maybe to 1.2, 1.3 billion. So I think like, you know, 10 billion for Q4 next year is really, really realistic in my opinion. So that, that gives me around three, three and a half billion in net income next year, Q4. And that's a run rate of, you know, 14 billion US dollar in net income for next year. And you know, we are already in the summer of 2024. So once you buy this stock, you're at least going to wait for two years, I assume, no? So if you have a company that's, let's say, projected to make 14 billion of net income, by next year, uh, December, uh, on a monthly, uh, on a quarterly run, run rate, you know, that's uh, the PE ratio is going to be at 20. So I definitely think that AMD, you know, with the growth that they are expecting, and as well, you know, when you consider everything, this is a company that is not nearly as uh, dependent on the data center as NVIDIA is. You know, NVIDIA's data center revenue is 90% of their entire revenue. Whereas for AMD, by my, my projections, it's going to be like, you know, maybe 60% of their revenue for uh, next year by Q4. So they are not as uh, in danger if there's a huge drop in the in the data center uh, AI GPU demand. 
So I think yeah, I think this uh, this is really pointing to the fact that AMD is in a strong position. Also, they're gonna get help from Broadcom and a whole lot of other companies like Intel and uh, Microsoft and Google that agreed together to find a competitor to Nvidia's NVLink, which is the way the GPUs communicate to each other. Once you go into you know the tens of thousands of these H100s that you know Tesla and Meta and all these companies buy. In. Because they need to communicate fast and efficiently. So that's why uh, Broadcom uh, went in a kind of alliance with AMD and Intel and Google and Microsoft and Cisco and a whole lot of other big companies to, to challenge NVIDIA and not let them, you know, run away with it. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, when you consider all of this, I think AMD is in a really good position. And I do believe that, you know, uh, by next year, I think this is a 500 billion US dollar company. So please like the video and dislike it if you didn't like it and you know subscribe and let me know what your ideas are here and see you in the next one.